It's a film your parents and grandparents cheered over. The kind that critics and film historians praise for a lifetime. See it listed at the Classic Film Festival, but often opt out for something shorter, more modern. When mentioning it on campus, I was often given familiar, well, I think I've heard of it before. I've never seen it, though. I must be crazy for choosing this film. But at the same time, I'm very excited for it. Perhaps that's the beauty of a classic. It's like buried treasure you find out in your backyard. A valued memory you never realized was there all along. Ben-Hur is a rare culmination of all the great classic films. It manages to balance the spectacle and awe of Star Wars, the story and emotional depth of Schindler's List. It's a story of exchanging revenge for forgiveness, as well as hate for love. It's something everyone can relate to and learn from in these chaotic times. I'm very excited to further analyze the importance of this film, as well as explore its relevancy to my peers, both young and old. Yeah, it's, um, it, it, it gave a very clear message that if you do fall, no matter how far down you can go, you can only build yourself back up, depending on how hard you're going to try. He said many times when he was on the oar day to day, his thoughts were getting back. His, um, his mission was to get vengeance, but it gave him the determination. So whether you have hatred or love for someone, the determination you have um, gives you that will to live and to get higher in your life. Definitely uh, Ben-Hur being the protagonist definitely went through some very tough times in his life, uh, thinking he lost his mother, going through slavery and everything, and through it, uh, he kept going, he kept persevering, and it's a good message, it really is. Um, no matter uh, how tough the times may get, the valleys you go through, the mountains you'll climb, uh, it really is just a good message that no matter what happens, you can make it. So, um, 1970s, 1960s was obviously a big change in America, a lot of like social issues going on and things like that, some stuff we're still dealing with today. So how do you feel maybe this, how this film can relate to audiences today as it did in the 1950s. Uh, everybody struggles with uh, being betrayed or hurt, and you can either look at make us angry and try to get, go and get vengeance, or we can love instead. Mm -hmm. And both have the same drive. It'll, both will take you to that goal that you're wanting, and it gives you the drive. Politics wise, I know, but like we're excited and we're looking at that much. But Knowing them, I still on the race part of it. You know, they were they were segregated. You know, the Jewish people were their own race, mm -hmm. and you have the Romans. Um, and then I thought it was kind of interesting that they had the Jewish people and the Arabian people working together. I mean, because in today's world, like that doesn't work. That mm -hmm. that doesn't happen. They're you know enemies. You know, there there's there's a lot of conflict between them. But in this movie, like they were working together. So we can't work together. We can you know everyone can live in harmony if we want to and try, but. People really don't want to these days. They don't want to work in harmony, live in harmony. It's all about me, me, me. It's like if you really were to get down to the nitty gritty part of it, like we would, we would, we would see more harmony because people don't worry. You don't look at the color of skin. You know, you as we saw in the movie. You know, every time Ben Hur got hurt, or even you know the other guy, um, the Tribune. You know, every time they got hurt, every time they bleed, they're bleeding red. You know, we all bleed red, we all have the same exact blood, you know, we have different colored skin, you know, some people are lighter than others, some people are darker than others, you know, some people have a good mixture of both, you know, it's, it's, a, it's amazing to think about it, but no matter what, the end of the day, when you cut your hand, you're going to bleed red, mm -hmm. you know, so there's, there, it is, it, I believe that if people would realize this, and realize that we're all the same, you know, nobody's different, yeah, we have different cultures, yeah, we come from different backgrounds, you know, it's not, it's, Saying, you know, I may not believe what you believe, you know, and uh, what the next guy believes, but at the end of the day, we all believe right. We're all humans. Yeah. Well, first of all, you know, a lot of young people today want instant gratification. So it would be great if they could endure the length of time to actually sit and watch this video and realize that there is something other than vengeance to kind of drive their motivations. In terms of vengeance, I think, you know, there are a lot of people out there with just hatred. But that's where this film kind of took a turn at the very end because you realize that Jesus Christ, you know, he was on the cross and you kind of realize that this was the man who gave me water at the very beginning.
really in the loop whenever he was struggling, you know, with Jesus helping him. And so he realized that there was something else other than just vengeance to kind of drive him, and it was forgiveness. And so that's that's a very powerful thing. Very, definitely very powerful. Peace in light of vengeance. The 21st century world is no metropolis by any means. And we're no closer to the United Country than we were in 1959. And that's where I believe Ben Hur has something more to offer us. More than grand sets, and more than daring chariot races. It offers us a miracle to our curse, a freedom from our suffering, and a release from our anger. Forgiveness. The ability to let go of all we dread and focus in on the good we have. There is so much the world has to offer us. If we only stop and look, if we only pay attention to life given us.